Hi, I'm Dennis Fisher. Welcome to another Lab Matters webcast from Kaspersky Lab. Today I have my friend Jose Nazario from Arbor Networks with me. We're going to talk a little bit about DDoS attacks, botnets, and sort of the current attack landscape. Um, so, Jose, DDoS attacks are not exactly a new problem. I mean, these things uh, have been uh, sort of an issue for 12 to 15 years now. Um, you go back to sort of the Mafia Boy attacks way back when. Um, why are we still seeing these happening? Obviously, they're, they're effective on some level, but you know, why haven't we figured out a, a great answer to this problem? As long as there's still a disparity between the you know, bandwidth resources available to an attacker versus the, the victim, this kind of attack is always going to be possible. They're easy. They're cheap. Right. Um, anybody can do them. You know, the, 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 the sheer number of tools over the years and, that have been, have been used or developed in this space is staggering. Um, but, you know, in the past, uh, say, five years or so, we've seen a dramatic uptick in interest in a broader community of people, right? So I think that's sort of what we're, why these things persist and why they're still ongoing. And so, you know, you said there's been a lot of tools written for these over the years. You know, I remember some of the original ones like Tribal Flood Network, Trinu, some of those that were some of the, like, original point-and-shoot DDoS tools. Um, how have they evolved over the years? How, how sophisticated are they now? How easy to use are they? So I got started looking back at, um, at Shaft and those, those tools back in the day, right, TFN, when Mixture was yep. quite the guy and he was developing these things. Um, you know, at the time, these were on Linux. You had to compile them. You had to sort of be a bit savvy and, and things like that just to get them on people's PCs. Right. And they were closely held. In the intervening years, you've seen them picked up on Windows much more so than any other platform. And the ease of use factor has gone through the roof. So, you know... The, the, the movement over to IRC as a botnet landscape was one change. It was pretty easy. Right. Now we're up to the sort of web-driven, if you can point and click your mouse and use a browser, you can control a botnet really, really easily. Um, these guys have help docs. These guys have support. These guys, you know, they've made it dead easy for people to use for kit-based stuff. And we still, of course, see custom stuff. But the, um, the kit-based stuff, the things that are widely used and deployed by people who can point and drool are basically... <laughs> really, really easy to use. So, And how easy is it to get your hands on these tools? I mean, we're not talking about a large financial investment here, right? I mean, they're, they're fairly easily downloadable. Yeah. So, you know, if you, want, if you feel like paying for them, you can pay as little as 20 bucks. Uh, you can find cracked versions all the time online. And, yeah. You know, it's, they're, they're not terribly hard to find. Okay. And so you guys have been doing a lot of research on, you know, you track uh, the specific, specific bot uh, code that's itself, botnets, botnet size, all of that sort of thing. Um, and it, it's grown from, you know, it went from that original sort of, you know, mischief DDoS thing, hackers attacking each other. It went to sort of a, a, a crime problem. Now there's a little more of that mischief being mixed back in. Um, is that something you expect to, to continue and, and sort of see that, um, that mix of reasons why people are doing this? So the, the diversion, the, the, rather the, the diversity of why people are doing this is, is, is pretty wide, as you noted. Um, the, probably the largest single uh, group that we see still are these sort of personal retribution attacks where, you know, you and I might be playing a game online and I pack at you to make a character freeze in the game and I can win the game that way. Right. Um, those are by and large the largest that we see out there. Um, in fact, it's actually really popular in the gaming communities what we're finding is that these guys, especially in the Xbox forums, you know, yeah. and some of the darker uh, uh, segments there, you know, talking about these packeting tools. Extortion is certainly out there, financial gain, uh, criminal and criminal. We see this all the time too, where one gang tries to shut another one down. Right. Let, you know, so they're not striking a perfectly reasonable, legitimate target, they're striking uh, somebody else. Uh, the ones that fascinate me most are basically these uh, ideologically motivated ones. So either over uh, geopolitical events, whether it be international, it could be a domestic political issue, and yeah. we've seen that sort of grow around the world as well. And now with the, you know, um, we're sort of a resurgence, if you will, that we saw in the 90s of hacktivism, yep. um, you know, over WikiLeaks, over, over uh, uh, anti-piracy efforts, anything like that. And it's not, just, it's not just one or two groups, it's really lots and lots of groups that are expressing their sentiments this way. And it's easy, and they develop these tools, and people want to be part of something. And uh, right. that's what they do when they, you know, that's how they show the, sort of their, their frustration with the system. It seems to be growing in that aspect. I mean, we see, saw it with the Iran situation. You know, it, almost anywhere there's, there's political turmoil, you can almost predict there's going to be some sort of, uh, you know, uptick in DDoS activity, um, probably on both sides. 
Um, so how hard is the attribution problem when it comes to DDoS attacks? I mean, we've seen, um, you know, Microsoft has taken some takedown actions uh, recently, which are great. Um, law enforcement seems to be making some progress there, but how hard is it in general to sort of backtrace and see who's on the other end of these attacks? It varies quite widely. Um, if you look just at the raw numbers though, right, of the number of at successful attributions, you know, there are a couple of dozen in this, in this space. Yeah, we track of, thousands of these attacks yeah, in a given day yeah. and thousands of these botnets in a given day. So your chances of being caught are very low. It just still takes time and effort you know, on the police, on the, the part of the investigators, sure. and more often than not, on the internet, it takes a lot of effort to go across boundaries, either uh, um, organizational or national boundaries, right. uh, international boundaries, to to gather data and gather evidence. It comes down to just being overwhelmed by the problem, and so you get to go over sort of the most uh, um, most high profile and the most accessible ones. Yeah. That way. And how often do you know, in your experience, uh, sort of looking at this landscape? How often do the victims of, say, a large DDoS attack, whether it's a commercial website or bank or something like that, how often do they even care who's behind it, and how often are they just more interested in, you know, filtering that traffic and getting on with their business? Most of the time, it's the latter, right? They just, it's you know, they, they recognize that there's a huge time investment in trying to bring someone to justice, yeah, and just you know, just make it go away and let's get back on to let's get back to business. Yeah, let's start making money again. Okay, all right, Jose, thanks so much. Thanks, Dennis. And thank you all for watching. For more Lab Matters webcasts, please check out our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Kaspersky.